producing um, African mission resources for the church. Um, and so I think that's a very important thing. So I have uh, several people who are here. You'll see them throughout the program. And uh, we, we call them vendors, but really they're partners. So I'm going to ask them to come and join me. Um, we need Eric Waweru. You heard him this morning. Just come take a seat here on the front. Uh, he's with uh, Kweli Translation Trust. Uh, Kefa Sakwa, I think, is here. He was here. Oh, there you are. Come, please. Come join us with Axe Bookstore uh, here in Nairobi. Nyamburo Kamau he is uh, from Langham International. And then Mwangi Kiara is coming also from Ecclesia Africa and to collect his name tag. <laughs> That's how I get him. And then Malele Ngalu from Oasis International. And I have one more seat because I was hoping that um, that is either Doreen or Florence here from Actia. Uh, would you mind coming and joining us on the panel? And um, we'll allow you to show us your face if you want, but you don't have to. Can you clap for these people? <laughs> Just you. These are some of our friends and partners. There are others here in the room, people who, are, who care about theological education in Africa, and particularly as it relates to um, providing resources. Um, I myself am representing the Outbound team, uh, which is involved also in producing African missional resources, and also I'm standing in a bit for AB 316 as well, because as an organization, AB 10, our Writers Guild, AB 316, is producing uh, missional resources. I think you guys know that there was the book, the Abandoned Gospel, that we have done. Well, there, your, 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 your Writers Guild has produced two other resources uh, that are going to be unveiled at this very meeting. We're excited about that. Uh, you'll see those um, actually uh, on Friday is when we'll talk about those on the last day at the resource fair. We're going to have a discussion about those. We'll expose you to those, and we have copies for everyone to go with. Uh, so, yeah, so you'll be happy about that, too. Um, but, um, but, for, but for now, it, it, um, we're going to talk more about resources. We'll talk a little bit about the resource fair that's happening uh, on Friday, on our last day. But uh, I wanted to ask these people, because these people are involved as Africans who are working with Afri the African church to produce resources for Africa. And not just for Africa, but from Africa to the world. We have to, we have to add that last part. We're always talking about by Africans for Africa. That's good, but let's add one more thing. By Africans for Africa, and then from Africa to where? The to the world, that's right. Because you have a voice, you have something to say. There's something that the African church is bringing to the theological table that is important for the rest of the world. Um, I've used this example many times. I've said, I long for the day when the next systematic theology that's used in the U.S. is written by an African author. That's, that's, that's what we're doing. That's what Abtin is all about. We're trying to produce African-generated resources by African theologians, and even Ab 316, the whole purpose of that Writer's Guild is to produce the next generation of African uh, author and African theologian. And so that's part of what we collaborate around. But let's talk about that in terms of resource development for the African church. Um, I'm sitting there saying, go to the next slide, and um, where is my clicker? It's there. Do you mind, honey? So everybody can see you. Thank you. Um, so let's, let's, let's introduce some people uh, who are here. I'm going to start here. She's not there on the, on the, the screen, but tell us your name and just give us just a brief uh, just maybe a few sentences about ACTI. My name is Florence Kagwamba. I work for ACTI. ACTI uh, stands for Association for Christian Theological Education in Africa. We are celebrating 46 years this year, and we have about 87 institutions in Africa. Basically, what ACTI does is to assist and promote theological education to ensure that institutions are offering um, quality theological education in Africa. We don't only do accreditation, but we assist institutions with scholarship when it comes to writing. 
just as what Kevin says, to, pro to be able to produce quality publications. But uh, other than that, also we do the faculty training and um, um, support services. So if we have uh, faculty trainings, we have uh, librarian trainings, we also try and get resources for our institution at a cheaper rate, be it uh, subscriptions for the library or uh, get some books, uh, containers and supply to our library. Uh, currently we have a container at AIU and we are offering books to our institutions. So if you haven't received any books, please visit, uh, uh, come get to see me and I could give you more information on that. Amen. But basically we are in Nairobi, Kenya. That's where our headquarters are. But we also have an office in DRC Congo, Kinshasa, and uh, a few people representing our office in Nigeria and Ethiopia. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Passed. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Mwangi Kiara. Um, I am a Christian. Um, I, I, I serve with the Ministry of Ecclesia, which is a ministry of Emmanuel Baptist Church. So I'm also a member at Emmanuel Baptist Church in Lavington. Uh, I serve with Ecclesia, I have done for two years, almost exactly two years, it was two years, two weeks ago. Um, Ecclesia Africa is uh, an organization, a local publisher. We aim to resource, we aim at resourcing the church, the local church in Africa, in Kenya specifically, in more rural areas, in Nairobi as well. Um, we do this in a number of ways. We realize that a major problem with our context is distribution, um, being able to get books to the last person deep in the village. But on top of that, there's other issues that, of course, arise, and I think we'll talk about them. Uh, Ecclesia, we try to get those books and resources to pastors through a program that we have called the SOMA program. Try to we organize a curriculum that pastors can read a book a month um, in, 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 in helping them grow and in their churches. We also obtain copyrights from um, one way that we get books of, uh, affordable here in Kenya is we obtain copyrights from publishers like Crossway, Ligonier, Desiring God, and are able to print the books locally. So, excuse me. If we were to uh, rely on like Amazon, if I bought a copy of like what is a gospel on Amazon, by the time it gets back to me, it'll be like twenty dollars. But because we're able to print it locally here and sell it, it goes back to around two or three dollars, which which is a help and a great mm. uh, 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 chance for now pastors and Christians here to buy. Them. Thank uh, you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Once again, my name is Eric Oweru. I work with Kweli Translation Trust, a Nairobi-based um, organization that seeks to translate resources from English to Swahili. We have between 80 to 100 million Swahili speakers. We have a whole country, uh, Tanzania, um, who are all Swahili speakers. And so one of the things, in order for this mission of Christ to extend, in order for sound doctrine, as we were encouraged earlier, to progress, we need to translate this resource to Swahili. Because that's a big group of people, both in the rural areas as well as in the city. So we do that by, one, coming alongside partners, ministries, to help them get there by translating their resources. This means in this particular context, we're talking about institutions coming alongside you to develop, um, if you have not developed a curriculum that addresses that particular people, and then translating it into Swahili and making it available to this 80 to 100 million people. Okay. Uh, sec secondly, we not only do that, but also we translate resources personally from the resources that are available online, but also people who might be interested, especially writers here, as well as everywhere else, to help them translate these resources so that we can reach the Swahili speaking world. That's all we do. Thank you. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. My name is uh, Kefa Sakwa. I work with uh, Africa Christian Textbooks. Uh, in, uh, for, uh, in acronym is ACTS, like the Book of Acts, and we are located at AAU. Um, ours is uh, a unique ministry. We are a Christian bookshop that strictly strict on the Christian literature, and we are so much in not talking anything, uh, everything, I mean. We talk very sound books, and uh, uh, ours is just to make the resources 
available and we partner with uh, publishers all over the world, US and UK, and uh, we have negotiated with them. They give us a good discount uh, that will make these books available. And some who come from the West, they normally ask, how do you get these books? Because the books here on the shelf, when they are on the shelf, they are cheaper than when they're in the shelf in the US. So that has been a great uh, support from the partners all over, and we are very grateful for that ministry. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm privileged to be uh, part of uh, what Lang is doing. Uh, we are partnering also and getting their books on our shelves, and I like the, the, what they are doing. We are also partnering with the Oasis that will speak, and we are just the center of all this, even Ecclesia, we partner, and we thank God for that. I'm Amen. the general manager. God bless you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Nyambura Kamau, and I work with Langham Partnership. I have the very exciting role of coordinating partner relations in Africa, so I look forward to meeting each and every one of you personally somehow between today and Friday when we end. And I also have the privilege of um, giving administrative support to an exciting new project that we are doing, which is the Hippo Exegetical Bible Commentary Series. And I hope that there are some biblical scholars here that might be also part of that uh, project. Amen. Now, Langham Partnership um, serves to uh, equip Christian leaders across the majority world. And we do that through three primary ways. There's Langham Literature, that has uh, one of the programs which is very exciting for the libraries here, is we have an annual library grant program where we are able to make uh, books available to the libraries that apply. And it's, we ship the books that they apply for free to your library. And the equivalent is about 10 to 12 uh, theological textbooks. And we also extend the discounts, which are up to even 40%, some 50, for the faculty and the students to be able to benefit so that they are able to build up their own personal libraries. And even as they go out after they've left the institution, they have resources to use. And we also um, publish authors. We develop materials from the majority world, so not just Africa, Africa, Asia, uh, Latin America. And so it's exciting to have you here because we hope that we will publish not just PhD dissertations, but also uh, relevant material to equip the theological institutions. Secondly, we also partner with theological institutions through the Langham Scholars Program, where we are able to offer extend scholarships for PhD uh, students from the majority world. I do confess it is a very competitive program, but I'm glad I've already met one of the Langham Scholars who's here studying uh, down in South Africa. So please, don't hesitate to uh, build up your faculty, develop your faculty through applying uh, for that program. And the third uh, way that we partner uh, with the church in terms of equipping for missions and also the, you know, the larger role that the church plays is in the Langham Preaching Resources. And what that does is uh, it's material that equips pastors who are on the ground who may not be in an, an academic setting so that they are able to develop their skills in expository preaching. We have had throughout the day that it's relevant and it's important for us to have biblically sound content being taught, not just at the theological schools, but even in the non-formal training uh, situations that we are involved in. So welcome. I look forward to Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's, it's amazing to see brothers and sisters uh, in the faith. Uh, my name is uh, Malele Ngalu. I'm here representing Oasis. I manage the region in East Africa, but uh, we are an Africa-wide um, discipleship and training materials uh, publisher. And uh, one of the key things that we are known for is developing African authors. And so we realize that, as, as we've heard uh, from the morning, that we need to allow the church in Africa to have a voice in terms of the materials that we develop. And so that aspect of contextualizing different themes across the world into the African continent is what we pride ourselves in. One of the key things that we've done that we've, we are known for is the Africa Study Bible. And uh, over a period of seven years, 
we brought together more than 350 theologians just to look at the NLT and contextualize its application, notes, and study notes mm. within the African continent. Mm. Mm. And uh, out of that 350, 69 of those were women. And so it's just not, we were very deliberate to ensure that even women are represented in it. These materials are available in English, Portuguese, and in French. And so that allows us to reach the majority of the continent, but also we are privileged to work with uh, different ministries here to be able to translate whether it's into Swahili or other languages that are relevant that we may not necessarily be measuring in. And uh, specifically for this conference, we'll be sharing our catalog of resources of both the Bibles and the books that we have, and uh, we'll be giving them out at a 40% uh, discount. Okay. So we'll put that in the group. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate the introductions. We were going from sentences to paragraphs to thesis and dissertation because we have many questions yeah, about producing African resources. I will say this, all of these people will be represented in the resource fair. So on Friday we have the resource fair for a couple of hours. We'll all be together. There'll be other tables as well. All the resources will be there. They'll be developed and they'll be there in the in, in uh, uh, Saunders, thank you, dear, up in, the, in Saunders Hall that day. So they'll be there. They'll have tables. They'll, their books will be there. You'll be able to see them, to buy them. Uh, we're even talking about maybe having some previews, things tomorrow out on the veranda. So we'll see. But they're there. But really, I wanted them just to answer questions for us as the experts for this session. Okay? So that's what the panel is, is about. And I feel bad because some of these guys need sunglasses. They're being blinded by the <laughs> screen. I hope you're okay. Um, maybe advance for me because I don't think it's wanting to do that. Uh, let's go to the first question. So we won't have time for everyone to answer, but let me just ask some people. Um, let me ask, uh, I'll start there with Nyambura. Is it necessary for Africans to produce their own resources or can we rely on what others have produced around the world? Wow. So the Swahili saying that says it's a contemporary saying, not the traditional ones that saying, Umeuliza Jibu, you have asked an answer. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so maybe then say, Kwanini, why? <laughs> um, it's critical for African, Africans to develop uh, materials for this context for various reasons. Um, I believe one of the things that uh, Professor Mburu in her book, African Hermeneutics, has made clear is how methodology is approached or understood in, based on the different contexts that someone comes to. So if, you want, if, if we want to develop missional churches, then we have to be able to develop materials that speak to this context so that you, you connect to the heart of the African minister to be able to then build the bridge to do missions locally and globally. Um, we, Langham uh, surveyed uh, over 400 um, institutions, mainly in Africa and uh, South Asia. And over 61% stated that their most critical need was materials developed from their context. And I can concur with that because I was in Ethiopia last, last month and every single institution that I met with was asking, give us the list of the materials that are developed from the African context. It's a need. It's a, it's a great need. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask then, I'll, I'll come to Eric. Uh, le let me ask you the same question because um, I know that in your work you get other things that have already been written from the West you translate them. So how would you answer that question? Is it necessary for Africans to produce their own resources or can we rely on what others have produced? So number one, we are standing on the shoulders of giants. Uh -huh. uh, so first and foremost, we have to admit that God has already been doing great work all over the world. Um, and so some, some of the ways we do that is if there are existing resources that can be helpful to the Swahili world, we will get them and we will translate them. Uh, because one of the things we need to get to is to a place where we actually don't need to have these resources because our own people have already been trained and they already understand and can actually now start writing in Swahili. But before then, because there has been a gap the last couple of years, 
that gap needs to be filled fast before we build a foundation and then now raise a structure. So that's why we need these resources from the West, number one, but it's to use these resources towards raising this uh, Swahili speaking world to start writing. I see. But number two, already there are, so there are English speakers who are African, and one, one of the things I'm hoping to do is translate uh, Dr. Liz's book and make it available for our people. Go to the next question, if you would, and pass the, there to Mwangi. Um, do you think there are enough resources out there for the church now? And if not, why, why do you think that is? Um, similarly, tied to what Eric was saying, I feel like there's uh, a lot of work that's been done in the past. Even in Africa, in Kenya, there's a lot of work that is, has been going on even for the last few years, especially in the last few years. There's always something else that can be said about uh, uh, different topics in the scriptures. I mm -hmm. feel like there's always something you can add and always some more wisdom that can be brought on board. And, uh, um, and so I, I would probably say there hasn't ne necessarily, it's not so much a numbers game like is there enough, is there not? Uh -huh. It's like there's always something else that sure. can be done. And the second part of that question was? Uh, uh, why do you think that is if there's not enough? Uh, different reasons. I feel there's, there's different contexts in Africa that, uh, that, that have caused the continent to lag behind in whether geopolitical issues and then also the, the fact that Africa is such a segmented continent. There's mm. so many languages. Even within Nairobi, even whenever we talk about like Africans writing for Africa, one of the, and yes, I'm all for that, but one of the challenges with that is which Africans? Yeah, good. Because even within Kenya, even within Nairobi, there's so many cultures there's, you go to one section of Nairobi and there's a totally different culture. Of course, there's uniting uh, aspects to that. Uh, but one, I was saying geopolitical issues, there's poverty. There, a few years ago, I mean, a few months ago, me and my colleague were, went to, uh, visited a ministry in Malindi, and we met a couple of men, and a bunch of very old men. They were pastors, they pastored there for a long time. And we were talking and getting to know about their church, and they told us the biggest, uh, there's a, they told us one of the things they were facing right then is, the men's ministry had bought two goods last year and to raise money for the men's ministry because they would milk the goods and then sell the milk. But one, why they were, the, I mean, we met them and they told us one of the goods had died and it was going to scatter all their plans mm. for the next six months. And it kind of just humbles you to what you are really dealing with mm. when it really breaks down to the villages mm -hmm. so that even we can print and publish books and we can do all these things, but there's a certain sort of context down there in the village that predisposes these people to lagging behind, mm -hmm. whereas it's not the same in other parts of the world. Okay. And so I feel like, yes, there's many as aspects that, as Eric says, I feel like slowly by slowly, we'll get there. Mm. Can you pass to Malele, please? Why is Africa behind on resource development and distribution? What do you think? Well, um, or, or are we? Maybe we're not. I, I, I don't know what you think. So there, there are a couple of aspects um, because the publishing uh, sector in Africa is, is growing. I think uh, the West and other regions have had uh, you know, more time to be able to develop that infrastructure. So if you look at that, that we're just starting to develop that, and then you look at uh, our logistical challenges in terms mm. of infrastructure, you combine those two, uh, then you realize that um, we still have uh, some way to go. Mm. And that's why ministries like ourselves do not just want to uh, develop the resources, but actually ensure that they are able to be distributed mm -hmm. to the pastors that need it most. Mm -hmm. And if you just do distribution and you'll do well with equipping, but you don't train, then you still find the same reasons. Mm. And so that's why for us, we really try and not only develop, but also distribute, but at the end of the day, once you distribute, you have to go down and train people how to use these resources. Mm. Yeah, you know, if I could add to that, when we did the Abandoned Gospel a couple of years ago, and, uh, and we have copies of those here, by the way, we'll, if you've not gotten that, we'll, we'll have them for you. But when we did that book, and it's a great book, but the biggest challenge we had was distribution. Because we could print here, probably Kenya was one of the cheapest places to print with the, pub, the printer that we're using. But then now you print those copies, but how do you get them to the countries around? 
and we were trying to ship by bus, but it's like you had to have a different strategy for every country. You have to have not only the ability to write books and then now to publish them, editing and publishing and layout and formatting and all of that is a thing. That's a big issue. Then on top of that, now you have to have the means of transportation and distribution uh, and printing and all of that. And it just becomes a phenomenal process. And what, what we ended up having to do was to try to do the print on demand, which I think that others are doing. And we find partners in other places. And then you have to have contracts and, and MOUs and you give them the rights to print in a country. And then it's, it's just so complicated that literally you'll, you won't sleep at night if you try to. And, and it just, it's not easy. It is, it's, it's, the, it's the continent. And in some ways it's the compartmentalization and, and all of the languages and all of the different kind of, it, to, to connect the, the, this, this continent is not an easy thing. Um, so it's a, it, at least that's been my experience, it's a big challenge. It, it, honestly, to find the people who can write and the books that need to be written it might be the easiest part of the, of the task. Um, it, it's shocking as that is. Go to the next question, please. Um, so I'm going to ask our, our Actia scholar on this one. Maybe she's not seen it, so we'll tell her. As, Af as Africa has now become the center of Christianity and the next mission sending force, what steps does the African church need to take in order to accomplish this task and what types of missional resources need to be developed? Um, sorry. Um, one of the, that, that is one of the things actually we've noted. And uh, it's interesting because one of the biggest topics that we've been talking currently is um, non-formal and mm -hmm. formal education. Mm -hmm. We've actually noted that um, we do know that there is formal education and uh, which sometimes everybody thinks it's the most important uh, kind of education, but we've also noted that as the African church is growing, there is also quite need to acknowledge that we have non-formal education and it needs to be, um, even act itself needs to actually acknowledge the same and ask itself, what can we do to ensure that we are also improving that part of uh, uh, education? And this is mostly because uh, we've realized, um, um, I'm not too sure who actually came up with this, but I do remember in March we had a meeting and one of the shocking things we were told was around only 2% of the pastors have been trained. Mm. And uh, it is really sad when you think about that and especially knowing uh, we had a discussion back there in our group and knowing how long the gospel has been here. And so the question has been, I personally, when I got to know the Lord, I was led uh, to, uh, I did discipleship with someone who was not actually trained to be a pastor. So one of the things we are also trying to see as ACTI is, can we go back to the village? Can we go back to other um, uh, places in Africa that are not reached and say, this, we are growing this in the church. Mm. So this is the best way we can actually, not with the 2% that is trained, but with probably 98, 8%, that, 80% that is not trained, but is actually reaching more people in the villages than the places where we are doing the training. Mm. So the theological education is sort of taking a turn and not only all frequently thinking about the formal education, mm. And so the discussions have been continuing globally with ISET, International Council for Evangelical Theological uh, Education, together with all other associations, and we are saying we need to address this. Mm. This is where we will actually ensure that uh, the people are reached and the gospel is growing, and actually uh, we are able to produce uh, more TOTs and T, uh, to be able to reach wide with the growing of the church. Okay. Pass to Kefa, if you will. Tell us about the kind, I know you have so many resources, and a lot of those are directed towards maybe the church, strengthening the church. But what kind of resources are there or need to be written to help the church be more missional? Uh, one thing I want to appreciate is that uh, the resources have been avail are available with us, and um, 
The only thing is that uh, we need to encourage more young scholars to come up and do more work because what we rely on is uh, basically uh, from the West. And mm. uh, I think that you, you take the context, you find that uh, uh, you tell an African that the same message, but when you bring it down to an African, it, it looks something weird. So we need to come up with scholars, uh, especially I see most of the people here are lecturers and you're doing a great work, you're training people, pastors. Uh, let them not just stop with the dissertations and assignments and whatever. Let them go back to the basics and do more work to write. I deal with books. I deal with this uh, 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 distribution issue. But for the nine, ten years I've been working this, I've had questions that how many African authors do you have in certain areas? Yesterday I got a call from Rwanda. How many female theologian African books do you have? I only had Lisburu's book. <laughs> and then I was shocked because they wanted to buy many. Then I was like, we need to come out. We have books on missions. We have books on preaching. We have books on systematic theology. But we need African authors because most of the what I distribute they are westernized. They are all western and we cannot throw them away. Because even these scholars we are speaking about, the ones we are training, they have the basic, uh, they, they have been trained under the background of the, the western. So we need to build on it and come up with that. Uh, as a bookshop, we've been there for 13 plus years and we tend to stock a lot of books. Uh, and uh, most of them will be having them to here tomorrow, uh, not tomorrow, actually on Friday. I would like to encourage you to come and see what we have. Uh, we, we need to see on the deficit that we have. Uh, I think I have a book here by Mbewe, and I would like to, to encourage uh, what Ecclesia has, uh, um, Ecclesia has done, Ecclesia Africa. They have done a good work just to have this book available here. Yeah, this book, the last time I ordered, was like $19, but this book we were giving for free. And I liked uh, what Mbewe, the approach of Mbewe, and it's going to give you a lot of things. If you have this book, don't throw it away. It's a, a, something to keep. I have this copy, it's mine, it's not you. I'll not give it away. Page 153. Page 153 will tell you why we are lacking behind in mission work. Hmm. And he lights a lot of things. Some of them you say financial, and then he comes down, he knocks you out. So you need to, if you have this book, please, it's a treasure to keep. And they have done a Swahili ones. Uh, if you can talk to Mwangi, uh, Kiara, they have the Swahili ones. If you are Swahili readers, they have done that, and I like that. We need more translators like Eric and the others to come up because you go down, uh, you go down there. People don't know Swahili, they don't know English, they don't know French, but they want to be taught. Now it becomes an issue, so we need translators to come on board to translate these things. Now this book is going to be re read by a Swahili reader through the work of translators. So it's not that we have resources. Let us make them local down there so that they reach more. So let me ask this question. I, I've, I, I'm aware of, of Conrad's book. It's an ecclesiology book. It's a great one. I, I love it. I've given him so many copies. Uh, I'm aware of Liz's book on hermeneutics. Ezekiel Ajibade just came out with a pretty good book on preaching. And, um, and there are people who are writing around. But I, I can't recall an African writing a book on church planting or on missions or on cross-cultural uh, communication, those kinds of things. Um, is, is, do, are you aware that that's there? Because the, the theme of the conference is missions and missional, and I do feel like that the African church is beginning to address internal uh, issues, and of course you need healthy church to sin, I get that, but they're addressing internal issues, but I, I'm not aware if we're 
if we are equipping our people to go? Or maybe are there some bright spots that you see currently in missional, missional resource development? Who would, anybody wants to, go ahead, brother. Um, so one of the things, just talking about Conrad, um, one of the books that might not be fairly known, actually two books, one is um, a case study on one of the missionaries in Zambia. I think that is one of those books written by Langham. Um, and then the other book is Foundations for the Flock. It talks about ecclesiology, yes, but actually talks about church planting and missions, and particularly showing the case study of how Kabuata Baptist Church, alongside uh, other churches in Zambia, the Mustafa Baptist, have been able to plant over 60 churches in Zambia. Hmm. Um, and I think that's one of the bright stars. Uh, and of course, locally here in, in Nairobi, one of the other bright stars is ISAV, um, together with the, yes. uh, Grace Point Church. And one of the, some of the things that are, they are doing in terms of, they haven't produced resources yet, uh, but they have been mobilizing, especially the campus side of things. And these young men and women, before they go out into the work world, they come to this institution for a year or two. They're sent out all over the country, and even in the East African region and they get the opportunity to see missions mm. um, from the forefront. Mm -hmm. And most of those guys come back, they're the guys supporting uh, Grace Point and ASAV and many other ministries, but also they're the guys who are planting churches and going out as missions. Okay. So those are the bright lights. Yeah, please, Namjor. I think you'll be our last one. So another bright spot that I see is the growing demand for contextualized resources which means that there is a market for you to develop theological resources for training and equipping the students. Another one is to see the expansion in the thinking of missions. Now, oftentimes, when people think missions, we are thinking maybe local or going to the unreached people groups. But there is a need to develop resources that also equip Africans in diaspora, so mm -hmm. that we're doing missions in partnership. Mm -hmm. There is missions locally where the local church is in the neighboring community. There is mission within the region, maybe the unreached people groups, you know, the other, um, those, yeah, the unreached people groups, whether it's an economic group or, or an actual uh, community, you know. And there is also missions to the global north. And that can only be done if we develop resources that not only equip the pastor here to think locally and globally, but also work resourcing the Africans in diaspora. Hmm. So that as they are doing missions, they are, or they see that it's an opportunity to do missions. Hmm. But as they do missions, it's not just um, missions to, how do I put it, to the Afri other Africans in diaspora, which is an easier mission book to reach, but it's actually reaching the native populations of Europe and North America, Australia and the other regions. Hmm. Not just the, the diaspora but the native populations. Mm. So that missions is not just local, it's not just um, you know, the regional surrounding, but it's also global. And one of the resources that we, uh, Langham will be publishing this year is Africans in Diaspora. Uh, for African, that equips Africans in Diaspora as well as those here, is Africa Bears Witness. It had been published before um, by ATNP, but we'll be republishing it this year. And that is a, a very wonderful resource you know, that you can use when you're equipping your pastors, your students, to think locally and globally and how to partner with those who already hmm. are in diaspora hmm. to be able to do that. That's good. Maleli, can you, I'm sorry, if, uh, we'll come to you. Um, you'll be the, the next to last and then you're the last one. Um, tell, tell us, w what projects are you working, what are you excited about? What does Oasis have coming that we can be expecting? Well, uh, we, we have a couple of things. But I'll talk about two that okay. are specific to this okay. conference. So one of the books that uh, we have that has come out is uh, called The Disciples Toolkit. And it's a collaboration between George Mituku and Mark. And it's practical steps after you evangelize to someone, what do you do to disciple them? Hmm. Because I think sometimes when you talk about missions, we do a very good job to evangelize and sometimes don't do a very good job to disciple those we've evangelized to, to grow in the faith. Hmm. So as I said, our work is, as Oasis is to say, how can we serve the continent? And because we've seen there's a need to disciple, then we've developed a book to do that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, uh, the other project we are excited about 
is what we call God's word for Africa. Mm. So the, the Bible, the Africa study Bible, the hardcover would cost you about 25 to $30 to, to deliver across Africa. But what we've done, we are doing a project where with a core funding of between five to ten dollars, we're able to deliver those to pastors who need it the most in very remote areas across Africa. Mm. I know you, we've talked a little bit about logistics, mm. but as uh, Oasis, we've developed a network and yes. we can confidently say out of the 55 nations across Africa, we're able to deliver to 40 of those Amen. and That's are working good. on the difference good. of the 15. That's good. And so if, if, if you're looking to deliver anything that is of need to the body of Christ and to the church in Africa, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oasis is there to be able oh. to help you Amen. do that. Amen. Amen. Clap for him. Can you pass to Florence, please? Florence, what would you say to us to finish our time? Well, um, one of the things I, need, I wanted to mention was um, you had spoken about um, the resources in, uh, in our schools. One of the things ACTI does is assessment of our libraries. And I will be honest and say um, the highest percentage does not meet actually the books that uh, are needed in those libraries. And one of the things we also request is if an institution could get at least 10, 20 to 40 percent of contextualized books. Hmm. Uh, we do encourage institutions to have the African uh, literature, but one of the things also we've noted is they are either not there or they are not accessible. Hmm. We used to have uh, what was called book notes, and unfortunately the, the founder of book notes has aged and uh, it has been closed down. Maybe it's one of the things I could request, well, if you touch of the Lord, you could pick up that because the book notes used to actually look at all the African books that have been published. Sort of do a review and then send these materials to the school so the schools would easily hmm. know what books are there and what is available for them to use when they are doing their wow. curriculum. We are also encouraging institutions to review their curriculum. Hmm. One of the things we discourage is buying off for lack of a better word, the Western curriculum and bringing it to the African institutions. Some of these things work, but not everything works because also as much as we are sending these people out there globally, we are also sending them to the villages and other places in Africa to minister. So if we do not actually equip them with what they need to go out there and do their mission, then we are failing them. So we keep uh, advising the institution, we look at their vision and mission and ask them, is it speaking? to your institution or is it actually speaking to yourself as you look at your curriculum mm. and what is the impact that you're making to the, you know, with the students that you're teaching? Have you looked at the impact they're making out there? Mm. So um, one of the things we have October 1st to 4th is a consultation that is looking at a non-formal uh, non education and we are talking to the curriculum providers so that we can see how best we improve the mission, how best we improve the things that the church is uh, experiencing right now, as we said, with the 2% and to the 80%. And uh, so you are welcome. I'll be around in case you need anything or more information. Thank Probably. you. Thank you, my dear. Let, let's clap for these people. I'm going to let them sit. And Jimmy, if you could go to the next slide. I, um, I, I took the... Um, I took the liberty of taking this session uh, and wanted to have a panel. I've spoken too many times at Abtin. I want to have a panel discussion, but I, I couldn't let this one pass because I, it's what, when I, you know, I wear a lot of hats. You know, I have different hats. Abtin's only one hat. Uh, but the hat I wear most days is I lead a team uh, in our affinity called the Outbound Team. And what we do, it's a combination of theological education African missionary training at training centers and bringing missionary training for African missionaries to the local church, and then also globalization, where we're helping to try to launch and connect so that we can send Africans to the world. Our, our, our end vision, our theme is African missionaries sending, African churches sending African missionaries to the ends of the earth. What we want to be are the trainers, the equippers, the facilitators, the 
the prayer workers, the networkers, those kinds of things. And, um, and so one of the things that our outbound team has done is we've developed a website called www.africaonmission.org. And um, so you're not, you're banned from internet right now, but at tea time you can look at africaonmission.org. This is just a screenshot from that. Um, and we're going, we'll also, my wife and I will also have a table in the resource fair with some resources for you so that you can, you can access this website. Uh, but it's free and it's not, it's, it's by Africans for Africa. So uh, what we've done, if you look on there, you'll see the different tabs, my faith, my church, my community, my world. So this website is not branded by anybody, but it's Africa facing. And these are resources that have either been developed by African missionaries or they've been developed by African uh, pastors or African authors here. And, um, and they're, everything on this website is free. Now, the Abandoned Gospel is actually in French for free on here, but the, in English, because of Amazon, it's a link to Amazon. But everything else, because um, we don't own that, but everything else here are things that people have written and said, yes, you can put that on there. So just jump to the next slide, if you would. Um, this is down the page. When you go there, you'll find so many resources. So if you go to my faith, you're going to find all these theological education resources that have been developed by your colleagues. Like you see there, the Zambia Bible School curriculum. Nathan Gunter, raise your hand there. So the, 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 the team there at the seminary, they have a network of Bible schools. They developed a new Bible school curriculum. They gave us that curriculum. So it's hosted on the website. So if you go to the website and you click on that website, you're going to see in PDF format all of their, of their how, how many courses are in that? 27, 27 courses. And, you, and it's written by Africans for Africa. You can download those 27 courses. They're yours. You can go to your local printer and print them. Bind them in a book. And you can use them in your Bible schools, in rural Bible schools. Because we are trying to, how do we defeat this issue of distribution? How do, we, how do we promote African authors? How do, we, how do we do that? So we have so many resources. This, this is just from the front page, the most recent ones. There's an evangelism and discipleship training manual, I think that was developed here in Nairobi. There's the Grow Discipleship Set. I'm not sure where that came from. Another one that many of you have contributed to in this room is the Africa Theology Series. So Mark Phillips, who is in West Africa, is helping us with this. He has Elioth uh, Publishing. And so there is a, a, a set, if you were to click on that, it takes you to all the books that are being written by our writing team. So we have a missionary author and an African author working together, co-writing these different volumes. And they're there, they're available. It's a, it's a print-ready book in a print-ready format. You <laughs> click on that. You'll find, and many of these have been translated into uh, French and Swahili and into Portuguese. So there are multiple languages available on the website. You print, you click on that, and then you can download that. You can go to your local printer wherever you live. You can print that. You can publish that. You can get it out. So we're just trying to get along those different things. Is that my last slide, maybe? And um, yeah, I think that's it. So anyway, go to that website, africaonmission.org, and, uh, and just play around with that. And we're always adding and uploading things. So all of the things that Ab316 are, pr are promoting are there, and they're available. And, um, and you can either get a link to get them, or you can download them. Everything that our Ab10 uh, writers are writing, they're there on that website. Whenever we find good, and that's what I spend most of my time doing, is trying to find and not steal, we ask permission, I promise you, but trying to find as many African resources that are biblical, that are theologically sound, that are helpful, and put them on that website so that the church can have them. Um, because even though the, the, the infrastructure is not easy for the distribution system. The internet works most places. And um, so we're trying to develop systems to develop resources and, uh, and to get them out. Um, we have 10 minutes left in t until tea time. Are there questions? We won't do table discussion, but we'll take questions if you have them. 
By the way, we're always uploading resources to that website, always uploading. Uh, we're going to expose you. There, there's some of the Ab10 resources that are going to come out. You'll get them on Friday. We're just waiting until you see them because Ab316 is the owner. We're waiting until you see them, then they'll go on the website. So we, we want you to have everything. Thank you.